Hi, my name is Justin Chopin. I'm the founder here at Patch My PC, and in this video, we're going to cover new features implemented from May to October 2020 within our software. So before we get started, just want to make you aware of how you can submit new feature requests or new applications that you want to see added to our catalog. So to do that, you can go to our user voice at ideas.patchmypc.com, and this is where you can either upvote existing requests or you can add additional ideas if there's something that we don't currently have. And this is going to be ultimately how we build new features within the product. Uh, and then on our roadmap, which you can get to from the top of the same page, you can also see things uh, from that user voice and that customer feedback. And you can see how we ship that within the product, as well as things that we're currently working on uh, within the product group. So just a way to kind of keep up to date, as well as give us your feedback, which is ultimately how we build a better product. So to get started, I will just kind of jump in and show you some of the features that we've implemented. So the biggest one will probably be the Intune updates feature. I'll include a link that describes uh, in detail kind of how this feature works and how we went about building this feature as well uh, within the description of the video. But to just kind of show you what it looks like, uh, it works very similar to our Intune apps feature, which we've had for quite a while. It's just simply a different tab here called Intune updates. Now, the key concept here is that you can come in and you can enable which products you want to create an update for. And then once the synchronization runs and it automatically creates the updates and apps, the key difference is if we jump over to Intune uh, applications and refresh here, we can see that we have 7-Zip created as an application. But then for the update version, we can see that it's prefixed with update 4. And the way that the updates work are we set detection methods and requirements so that the update version of the Win32 app is only applicable based on a older version being installed. So this is how we're able to simulate a update type experience uh, from say Config Manager or WSUS for example, by setting the requirement so that that update will only be required based on an old version being detected, which will be part of the requirements that we automatically add to those update applications. And then from a deployment perspective, kind of the only difference between the Intune apps and the Intune updates are for the updates, you would deploy those as required and you could do a broader scope of devices and then let the requirements and detection method kind of handle whether or not an application actually needs to be updated based on an older version. So that Intune updates feature is new. We released that in May, 2020. Um, and we have a ton of customers using that, getting some great feedback. Uh, so definitely one of our bigger features in order to give more of a patching experience within our Intune application and update feature. Another feature that we implemented around Intune is this new database scan feature. So if you click this icon, what will actually happen is you can connect into your Intune tenant and then you can click query and then we'll actually go through and look at the inventory that your client submitted uh, through Intune and then we can analyze based on the apps that we support and let you know how many machines detected different apps and you can actually use this to come in and select products as well as even have them auto enable based on them being detected on a specific number of devices, for example. So this would allow you to automatically add applications, even if we add them in the future without ever having to come back into our UI. Or if you just wanna do a quick scan, you can manually come in here whenever just to kind of get an idea of what devices have what apps and make sure that you have the products that you need selected, for example. Another feature around Intune, if you go to the options of the Intune application, uh, what you can do is click this new application utility, and this will dynamically query uh, Intune and show you a list of all the applications within Microsoft Intune. And you can also get details here, like whether or not they're being assigned, for example, whether they're required or available. And you can even add additional columns in here if you wanted to as well, to just get deployment statistics uh, for your, your devices within your environment. From here, you can also export to a CSV file. So let me just go do that. So if you wanted to have this data and this export to CSV file also comes into play for our new feature for Power BI reporting. So if we jump back on that Intune article, which I'll link, um, we do have Power BI reports that you can download using our uh, link within the description here. And what that allows you to do is you can bulk look at all the reporting for how applications and updates are working within Microsoft Intune. 
So to show you what that looks like, I'll bring up one of the Power BI reports now. All right, so when you download that Power BI template, it will just ask you for that CSV file that you export from that previous wizard. And then from here, you can look at our Intune update statistics. So you can come down here and check out the patching, and you can even check out just initial application deployments and get details. So for example, with our environment, we can see how many patches are assigned versus not assigned. We can see how many are required versus uh, installed for the compliance status. You can also click in for patches based on the release date, and you can get more details about which updates are actually missing, and then just descriptions of that, for example. Uh, and then you can also, you know, if you want to jump over to the apps, you could see how your application deployments are looking, uh, things like that. So it gives you some better insight since traditionally there's not really great reporting that you can do at a bulk level within Microsoft Intune. Um, you would have to really kind of go into each application individually and kind of look at the statistics if you wanted to see assignment results, for example. But by exporting that in bulk based on our wizard, we can actually show you how's everything looking holistically within our Power BI report. So definitely a great option to kind of look where you're at from a compliance perspective, both for updates and application deployments. All right, so jumping back over to our publisher, this is actually a feature we just released this week. If you go over to our updates tab, you can click this new security document icon, and that's gonna bring up the CVE scan wizard. So the way that this works is you basically define a CSV file. So in our case, we can just look and we can see that we have an example CSV here. It just contains like a list of uh, CVEs as well as, uh, you know, list based on a specific product that we're tracking CVEs, and then based on like kind of like a scan output from something like a Qualys, where you can actually see devices. But the key thing here is it can really be anything, just as long as it contains a list of CVEs that you wanna track. So we basically just browsed out to this file, and I'm gonna go ahead and click process. And what that's going to do is it's gonna evaluate every CVE within that CSV file, and then it's gonna tell you the status of whether or not we know about it, um, whether or not it's already published, or whether it's unavailable within Patch My PC. So for example, if it shows up as available, that means that the CVE is available within an update within our catalog, but it's not currently published. If it's published, that means that that CVE is already available and it's been published within your environment. And then if it's unavailable, that simply means we don't know about that, it's not in any update within our catalog. So for example, we can click out and we can see for this specific CVE, we can see the product affected is a Java 8 update, and we can see it's available within the catalog. Now, if we wanted to go and look at the published one, we can see that that CVE that we're searching for over here, we can see that's already been published, so it would be available to deploy. And we can see the product for that is a Google Chrome version 84 update, for example. Now, if we wanted to, we can also group these by product. So for example, we can see published, we can see it's Google Chrome, uh, same kind of thing here for all the available as we can see most of those CVEs that are missing um, are, are a Java update that hasn't been published yet. And then if we didn't find anything about it, you can go kind of check out which ones we didn't know about, and then you can create an action plan for that. Now, if you wanted to from here, you can also select all of the available uh, products that are affected by a CVE that you're searching for. And then you can click import. And what will happen then is we will dynamically run a sync on demand and we'll publish any update that has a CVE available that you search for. So you can ensure that you can get those patches right away and you don't have to wait for the next synchronization, for example. This will also publish any update that you select here. Even if you don't have that product enabled for updates within the actual products tab here. So that's how the CVE feature works, and we'll be improving on that as well in the future. Another UI change that we made is we have this, a smiley face for like, and then a dislike, and then just a idea option. And what this will do is, depending on how you like a specific uh, feature within the UI, you can either like it and give a quick comment, or if there's something you don't like, you can come in and click the dislike and then let us know what didn't work as expected or what you wanna see improved. And that will come directly to me and our product group so we can evaluate any feedback that you're submitting within the UI. Another thing that we did is we added quite a few help links within our uh, publisher UI as well. So for example, let's say that you click the options 
If there's any configurations that you're not quite aware of what they do or you want more clarification, we added the more info links on a lot of these different options. So for example, if you weren't quite sure what update existing app means versus create a new, right from our UI you can click out and you'll get a detailed KB that kind of describes various different uh, options within that specific um, piece within the UI, for example. So we added this at quite a few different places. So for example, if we look at advanced, you can see that almost all the options have that more info. And we just wanted to make sure that there's a quick way where if you did want to get some detailed information about a specific feature, you would be able to get a KB that details that. And uh, just to make sure that you understand how things are working. Um, so this is available for just about every different aspect of our UI in order to make things easier to understand uh, within the user interface. Another feature that we added, so if you go to the installation directory, we now have a Patch My PC publishing history. And then we also have, let's go ahead and click that. So that will give you a list of everything that's been published. And then we also, let's go back over here, we have a download history. So this can be quite helpful where let's say, for example, you may have a firewall. What you can do, you can see a list of all downloads that were attempted. And then if you had a firewall, for example, and it was giving like a 403 denied, you could actually get the specific domain name of the binary that was trying to get downloaded in order to quickly make exceptions based on products that you actually have enabled. So a quick way to just kind of understand if things aren't downloading okay, you can get the specific domains and, and why the HTTP download failed. So definitely helpful for troubleshooting scenarios. A new feature within the Config Manager apps is, let's go ahead and look at an app real quick. So let's go look at Google Chrome. We do have a new right-click option and it's called Manage User Experience. So if we click on that, we can see that this UI is probably pretty familiar if you've used Config Manager but you can now set like additional information like install for system. Uh, one, one feature that's gonna be available soon that we've, we've implemented the changes for are we can start supporting per user applications as well. Um, so that's gonna be something that uh, we're gonna start looking at if there are applications that only install per user. We're gonna have the ability now with this feature to start implementing only per user applications as well. Before we only offered system level applications, so that would definitely help add some additional apps that we couldn't support before. And then just a variety of other options that you can set, and this will configure how the application is created within Configuration Manager for that experience. Another feature within the uh, SCCM applications is if you click Options, uh, we now have an option where you can actually configure, when you go to the provider, uh, you can actually create the Config Manager security role that you would need. Um, so basically back here in the UI, we need to give the computer account permissions where the service is running, and it can automatically create a security role for you, and it's gonna be only the minimum permissions that our service needs in order to actually create applications. So for example, if I wanted to click Create, we can see that it created the role for us. So if we refresh, we can now see that we have the Patch My PC Publisher role. And this is gonna actually have the minimum permissions that we need in order to go through and create applications as well as configure software update points and synchronizations, for example. So this will allow you to quickly get the least permissions that you need in order for our service to work. And then all you would have to do once that role is created is go add the computer account, for example, of the service running. Another feature, let's go back in back here, is over in our SMTP emails, we added the ability for you to send anon anonymously. So this was something where uh, we didn't have that option before. It would either send using the specified user that you define over here, or it would send using a um, system account of the computer that's running. Um, but some environments, they just want it totally anonymous, and that's now available here. And then another feature within our right-click options, uh, we do now have this new option that says learn more. And what that will do, that will take you and it will actually show you each right-click option that's available. And it will kind of document each of those in case you needed more details about any of the specific options that you can customize at the product level, vendor level, or all products level, for example, since there are quite a few depending on whether you're working with apps or updates, for example. And while we're talking about the applications and right-click options, 
One feature that we've added is previously you would have to determine whether or not you wanted to update your application in place or create a new application globally in the options here. But now we've additionally added that to the product level as well. So for example, let's say that for Google Chrome, let's say that you wanted to create a brand new application every time because maybe you wanted more change control and testing over that specific app. So you can now have a more specific customization level on whether to update your apps in place or create a new one whenever a new update's available at the product level. There you go, so that looks good. Okay, another feature that we've added over on our certificate is when you generate a self-signed certificate, we now give you the option whether you wanna disable it, the private key from being exportable. So for example, we had a customer where they didn't wanna allow the private key for the WSUS signing cert to ever be able to export and be imported on another device. Um, so we did give that option, just be aware if you do disable that. If you ever did move to a different WSUS server, you would need to generate a completely new certificate since the private key wouldn't be exportable if you, you chose that option. Okay, another feature that we added over in our database scan feature is if let's say, for example, you wanted to automatically enable a update to be published with full content when it's installed on five devices, you can now say if it's under five devices, let me only publish it with metadata only. So that means it wouldn't have to go download all the content files if you did wanna have kind of a threshold where you wanna automatically download the content so you could deploy the update. But maybe if it's less than that criteria, you can optionally go and you can click uh, only publish it with metadata to save some disk space, for example. And that's also documented within that new UI doc that we have as well. Next, over in the modify updates wizard, we do have some additional info that will show you the total number of updates, as well as the number of categories that are published to WSUS. This can be helpful sometimes uh, if you were using other catalogs before, since there is a 100 limit for the categories, you can quickly see whether or not you may have, you know, uh, you may have hit that threshold, which can cause some issues. So this is actually pretty helpful for us over on support, where we can quickly come in and see how many categories for third-party update products that you've actually published to WSUS. Another feature over in the About tab, you can quickly restart the service right from our UI. If there was ever a need for you to restart for uh, search and settings to apply, mainly helpful for troubleshooting, um, but just a new feature where you don't have to go into the services uh, anymore. You can just do it right from our UI. And then kind of the last feature here is we have this new option to show unreferenced updates. So if you've been using our product for a while and you've published a lot of updates that have become declined or superseded, we have this new cleanup option where it can save quite a bit of space if you did want to run that. So uh, we do have the more info link if you wanted to learn more about that, but this can save a lot of disk space by cleaning up old updates within the update services packs folder. Um, if you've been using the product for a while, we've seen some customers where they've saved hundreds of gigabytes of space, for example. So it can definitely be a helpful feature in some of those scenarios. That's pretty much all that I wanted to cover here and wanted to thank you for watching.